Yeah, hi guys. So I'm 5,000 miles into my tat ride, started in New Jersey three weeks ago, went down the Appalachians heading south, headed across the west, and now I'm in western Utah in the middle of nowhere. But you guys have been very helpful on the tat forum, so I thought what I'd do is give back a bit if, to the extent I can. So um, I'm a B-class rider, so I would classify myself as sort of intermediate, but um, so I've set my bike up and it handled really well. I'm riding a KTM 790R, beautiful bike, and with the Moscow luggage, as you can see. And I set it up and it handled really well around the forests of uh, the Appalachians and Arkansas. But on the open stretches in Oklahoma, western Utah, New Mexico, you know, I, it just felt a little, little on the edge. I mean, I was standing back, well back, but the front just felt flighty. I do have a... Uh, Scott damper so I had that bad thing turned up but even so I was just not I just didn't feel comfortable the front just felt like it might tuck in and coming in over Utah you've just got these long stretches of sand and the concentration needed for about 150 200 mile stretches is is a little exhausting so lucky enough and I give full credit to Chris Birch I was listening to him on Adventure Rider radio podcast and he talked about setting the bike up and basically if you're riding long sand, what you really want to do is have the forks at a steeper angle right? because then it rides like a chopper. It wants to get the back down, get the forks out straight as far as you can, so to speak, and the thing will stabilize in sand. And I knew that, but how do you do it, right? So there are basically three ways. So you can lower the forks in the triple trees. That's a big engineering task, and I don't have a, a jack with me, so I'm not doing that. You could push the bars back, so you're sitting further back, but obviously I'm limited by the, by the luggage and the seating. And the third idea of his was basically just to dial back the preload. Right? So on the Adventure, there's uh, about uh, 10 full turns of preload on the rear shock. It's riding solo, uh, I needed on about four. But all this luggage, I haven't weighed the luggage, admittedly, I was on at about 10, handled great in the forests. So I basically dialed it back to five, right? So I went from 10 to five, which you may think, well, that doesn't sound much. But funny enough, I did actually ride around Canyonlands, Utah, without the luggage, and I left it on 10, and the back end was kicking like a donkey, right? So it really does have quite an impact, this preload. And obviously this is the 790, but I'm sure this affects other bikes in the same way. So needless to say, I backed it off to five, and what that did is it sort of softened the rear, so the back is now sitting down, the forks are now stretched out further it made a huge difference i went from having to concentrate really worrying about the front end tucking worrying about you know popping over a berm only to see sort of soft sand and then finding the front end squirreling around and just that in mental and, and physical exhaustion has gone this has transformed my ride i'm sitting back and also the corrugated bumps you often find in these roads it just glides over them so top tip number one when you're coming to these stretches of sand, long stretches with sweepers, not the tight sections, dial back the preload, get that back down, get those forks out straight, sit back and relax. Anyway, hope you find that useful. I've got a few others coming up as well. But uh, by the way, I'm in the Pony Express station here, up in Western Canyon Station, up in Western Utah. Beautiful piece of the world. Take care.